a common question out there is, have you reached financial independence? How do you determine if you reached financial independence? Well, I've reached financial independence and I want to share with you how I made that determination. So I'm glad you joined me today and let's get started. My name is Jim Adams and welcome to my YouTube channel, Easy Investing Income. Today, I'm going to take a step back and I want to talk about how I've determined I've reached financial independence. I'm going to share with you um, kind of the reasons I wanted financial independence. I'm recently divorced. I'm 55 and I've got a, a son who's 18 and is an up and coming senior. And I've got an, a year, I guess, to spend with him before he he either joins the military, which actually he's uh, being tested today. Um, I think he's going through his physical and those kinds of things. And if he doesn't do that, then he may go off to college. Um, so I want to spend as much time as I can with him. I, I prefer to only be working part time so I can be there when he needs me and do things with him that I wouldn't be able to do if I had to really work a full-time job. So that's one of my main reasons. The other is just so I can do what I want and what I love. Um, you know, so I've noticed there's lots of videos out there about becoming financially independent, but there's nothing that talks about, well, how do you know if you really truly are financially independent? So first of all, one of the key things that you need to do, and let's just go to the next page, um, I use two things. I use what I call the 4% rule, which hopefully you guys have heard about. It relates to how much you can withdraw. Um, I'm going to share at the end of this video a calculator that I found that's called the 4% rule calculator, and it works really nicely. And I also, you know, it's critical to know what you spend every month and every year. Uh, last year, or actually it was 2019, at the end of 2019, I went through all my expenses for the previous year and determined what my monthly budget was. And um, that gave me an opportunity to really look at what I needed income in order to cover that budget. And I'm going to share that budget as well as, um, you know, how I've set it up and why I've set it up the way I have. Um, and then I use the 4% rule a little bit different than a lot of people. I look at it as to fill the gap for any shortcoming in cash I might have. So I have cash coming in from dividends and I have cash coming in from uh, premiums from selling stock options, which the, my whole channel is related to, to those things, um, bringing in cash flow from uh, dividends and stock option, selling stock options, uh, safe option strategies. And then, um, you know, I also mentioned here that I do not need a drawdown due to option premium. So originally I was going to have to use truly the 4% rule, meaning drawing down my accounts by 4% every year. But with the amount of, of um, option premium that I'm bringing in, I really don't need to do 4%. I can do more like 2%. And again, I, that'll be reflected in my bud, budget. Originally I was having to do more like 3, 3%. And um, you know, so the premium from the options has made it a lot nicer. And it also has given me the ability to maybe double my money quicker. So, um, you know, maybe I can reach other goals that I have quicker being able to sell options. So let's move on to the next page. Um, and then I, at the, like I mentioned before, I'll have a demo of this 4% tool. And then um, I'm going to show you my budget. So um, let me go ahead and move and switch to actually showing you my budget. Um, let's bring that up. So it's it's a spreadsheet <clears throat> that I've set up. And this will be available to any of my patrons on my Patreon page. But here to the left, I've got, and let's shrink this up a little bit and move it over here so you can see. So I've listed all the different categories and these are my monthly expenses. And what you're not seeing behind the scenes is, like I said, I went through all my expenses for a year and I broke it down and the items in red are the things that may change. So monthly or every other month, I look at this and I will adjust it. Um, 
So if we go all the way to the bottom, and you can see pretty much everything's in here. Um, car, car taxes, car insurance, um, you know, anything and everything you, you need to expense for. And at the bottom, it come out with a dollar amount, which here you can see it's four thousand and ninety three dollars or forty nine thousand a year, which is which is my budget. Um, and I also have in here I've got some fair amount of money for disability insurance as well as I've got money that goes out monthly for um, a pretty pricey life insurance policy. Um, so in, in some of these areas, I also look to see if I can do a little better with the with the monthly expenses. I'd, I'd like to focus on the things where I'm spending a lot of money or subscriptions that I might have overlooked. So here on the left, again, is my monthly budget. And then over here, I've got my brokerage account information. I do have my re require, uh, retirement information, and those are accounts that I'm currently not drawing down, but I'm also selling um, options on those too to be able to improve my return. So that's more of what I was meaning, that maybe I can double my money quicker over time. And then I'm showing here the income. So I've got close to 16,000 coming in on dividends between the um, my bro I actually have two brokerage accounts, but between those two accounts, I've got about uh, almost 16,000 coming in. And then for option premium, I put 24,000. Um, I'm averaging 2,000 a month now. Um, and that's only trading maybe four or five hours a week at most. Um, so between those two, you can see I'm bringing in close to 40,000. That's 39. And then here, this is my shortfall. You know, so I've set up the shortfall as 2%. So I'm using the, instead of the 4% rule, I'm using the 2% rule. And what you'll see when I switch to the uh, calculator is that it grows to a huge amount. And, and I've actually not even needed to use that full 12,000 um, or withdraw that, that amount of money uh, usually it's a lot less than that, mainly because my expenses. It you know it, it's they're not the same every month. They do fluctuate, but these these are averages for the whole year for the the monthly expense side. And then I do have a three percent rule for my retirement accounts, and that's for age fifty nine and a half. I'm currently fifty five, so you're talking in four and a half years. I'm also going to start drawing down my retirement funds. And I've got currently, if you go come back up here, I've got um, nearly 400000 in my retirement accounts too. So, and then here's the budget. And you can see between, you know, if you add up these three amounts, it comes out to 518820, which is 4300 And my, my budget is 4093 So I've got a premium. Of 225 a month, um, you know, or about 24, 2500 a year. So you can see by using this 2% rule along with the uh, dividends and premiums, I'm able to determine that I have enough money, um, you know, with a little bit left over to be able to do what I want to do. Um, and this doesn't include, I, I, I'm still consulting nowhere near as much as I used to, but I still do have some clients and I do bring in a little bit more income. But right now it's it's not that much. It's maybe three 3,000 a year if I'm lucky. So, and then I also added um, what, what my income would be with drawing down the um, retirement account, which is what I mentioned up here before this 391. And then this 3% rule um, at 59 and a half, I would be earning, what is that, 63, just 63,550, which gives me a monthly of 5,295 for income. <clears throat> and in the budget, I also did a budget and I added inflation of 3%. So my current budget would be more like 4,700, which would give me close to another $600 to be you know, have extra money that I'd pretty much leave in in my brokerage accounts and invest or use uh, to purchase additional shares and dividend-paying stocks. Um, and then I also have for my full retirement age, which would be 67, 
or about 12 years again since I'm 55, which would be 2032. So this calculation actually has what the Social Security um, site shows that I would receive at full retirement age. So that puts me at 7,500 if, again, if I'm doing the the same withdrawals to two and three percent, which actually would probably change, you know, mainly because those accounts will keep growing since I'm pulling so so little from them, you know. So, you know, but I have to look at this point in time, and that's what I think a lot of people, you know, on a daily basis, these numbers would change. But I can see just from looking at this that I do have enough money, and um, and I'm able to pay the bills, and that that's. Important, most important to me as well as being able to spend time with my son and, and do the things I enjoy. So you can see here actually in my retirement, I'm going to have quite a bit more money. Um, you know, so that that's the budget I use. And I've been using this um, probably for the last two, two years. And I had another budget very similar, but I didn't look at the 4% rule and the 3% rule. I, I really only learned about the 4% rule about three years ago. Um, you know, so in over the last two years, this has worked really well and has been very accurate. So now to be able to determine what would happen with my funds with this 2% rule, let's go over to the 4% uh, calculator, which you can see over here. They've done a really nice job with this. Here, I don't know how well you can read it, but you can see current age. So I'll increase this to um, 55. So I'll do 55. And then retirement age, I'm going to put down to 54. And then um, current assets, this is more like 600. You know, and now if you're looking at the graph, you might be thinking, oh, well, that he doesn't have enough. What's he thinking? But you'll see some of the assumptions. I'm going to change the assumptions I believe in. <clears throat> and you may, you may have different assumptions, so you would have to change them accordingly. So let's get this down to right around 600. And you can see the graph is going down. My eyes aren't the best. I need new glasses. And then I'm going to leave it to 30 years, which would put put it lasting until I'm 85, which I think is pretty accurate. I, I've also put it out to 40 years and have gotten pretty good numbers there too. So here, the yearly contributions, they won't really impact anything. And I'll show you that by putting them to zero. And this is where the difference. So they have inflation of 29 then they have 5% return for, um, you know, for post-retirement and pre-retirement. Pre-retirement really doesn't make any sense to have anything there. And you see it doesn't change the graph. But for the post-retirement, I've been able to get more like 10 or 12%, but I'm going to put it at 8, just thinking we're not going to have as much changing in the future. So now we, now that we have that, I'm going to leave the fixed to 2.9 and then I'm going to come down here and this is where it really starts to change. I'm going to leave the portfolio access. Actually, I'm going to increase it to more like 80. I'm not a big big one on bonds. I do have some though. Um, and then this is why the graph is cutting down so much, so low. They they're figuring that you want to withdraw 50,000. And you'll see, if I go back to my budget, you can see I was thinking I'd need 12,020. So if we go back to the, we go back here and we put 12,020, we get a, an accurate representation. So here they have the different retirement spending. You can do the I'd like to do the, a certain amount because that that's how it works for me. I, I, I'd like to determine what my shortfall is based on what income I'm bringing in and then go that route, which this equates to the 12,000 equates to uh, like a 2% withdrawal rate. And you can just see what happens here. So it's showing at 84, I would have $2.8 million. Um, you know, so then I played with, well, what if I live to be 95? Um, 
Yeah, it's a little easier to use that. So it's still, it continues to go up. And then um, you can lower the returns. So if I lower this a little bit, if I lower it all the way down to, so 6%, I'm still doing well. I think once it gets below 5%, then it's, so 4 What's it doing? So it's it's coming down. So the rate of return you can see has a big deal. If you're getting no, like you had it only in the bank, you would see it would run out. Um, but again, I'm, I was just doing that for an example. And part of the reason is because I'm pulling out so little amount of money. Um, again, I think it's more like 8%. And I've, I've done this with other calculators too, and it gotten similar results. And, and that's pretty much what the 4% rule, rule shows. It actually shows that you could do more like 45 to 5%. So a 2%, this is pretty typical. Um, and they do have another feature down here where, um, they have a advanced two period mode. They've got, you could use the 4% rule. It has a lot of different stuff you can do that allows you to try, you can add in social security, you can add in pensions. So it really gives you a lot to deal with. So I played with this quite a bit and just to verify that I would not run out of money with withdrawing that. And, you know, so between this and the actual spreadsheet, I've been able to um, determine that I, I do have enough to actually be financially independent. And, you know, this, if by chance after this next year, my son moves on to either the military or to college and I don't have enough, I can always return back to work. But at this point, it I'm confident enough that I'm not rushing out to find a job and I'm not listening to the media about, oh, you, you know, I think Susie Orman says you need $5 million in order to retire. Um, I find that a lot of that is, is, is not accurate and you don't need as much as you think. What, again, what is important is understanding that you need to have a good, healthy budget and understand how your budget works. The other part is my house, the amount in rent is really low. My house is nearly paid for, so I don't, I think I'm paying you know, only $200 a, a month. It's what's left is on a HELOC and I'm paying that off pretty quickly. So between having the house paid off and, and having a fairly healthy budget, 4,000 a month, you know, I'm, is still higher than it should be in some cases. And I'm looking at maybe if I can reduce that, but having enough, um, I'm not living high on the hog. I'm also, you know, not cutting things out of my life and living, too frugally, I, I, we st I still go out to eat, you know, and go do things with my son and um, di different stuff. So this this is overall how I've come to my determination that that I can I'm financially free at this point, and um, you know it it you never come to a point where you know 100% that you're you're truly you know set for life. Things change, life events change. But you do have to make a decision, you know, would you rather, you know, have your money work for you where you can enjoy your life more? Or would you rather be, you know, working for your money and, you know, not enjoying life as much? So this has worked out well for me and, and I hope it works out well for you. Again, this spreadsheet will also be on, um, be available to my patrons. If you want to join, I'll have the link below. Please subscribe. I'm uh, going to release videos every week and to talk about uh, op my options trading. Uh, last month, I'm, I'm working on that now. I'll put out my review. I actually made close to 3000 in one month. So, you know, even my option premiums could be considerably higher. Um, you know, and then um, if you like the videos, please click like and if you have any questions, please leave comments below and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.